Hi everyone. Good evening. If you can hear me, can you unmute yourself to um so I can to, to respond. Can anyone hear me? Can you chat in a comment if you can hear me? I mean, in the, in the chat box, rather. All right, thank you, Miriam. Thank you. So welcome again to um, another episode of our alumni webinar. So this month, we'll be talking about the importance of soft skills. And um, we have a very special guest I missed us. She's um the lead HR executive of Elvarida. She's her name is Miss Um Olupade, oh, sorry, Miss Olapade Busola. She's a seasoned um HR professional at Elvarida Limited. Elvarida is a human resource business consulting solutions company. Miss Busola has a um had a first degree in philosophy from the University of Ibadan. As a people-oriented person, she's responsible for introducing, maintaining, and improving organization culture, likewise work ethics and benefit structure. She has developed expertise in liaison between management and employees during disciplinary action and dispute resolution. Ms. Busola is proactive and committed, and a committed personal manager, personnel manager who implements shared values and cognizance of proper organization structure and appreciates the opinion of others. She is um, dedicated, enterprising, and demonstrates an outstanding requisite skills towards wielding our expertise to develop human capacity. That's one beautiful bio there, <laughs> Ms. Busala. Thank you so much for thank you so much for um accepting to speak to our alumni about um importance of soft Please, um, would you like to go ahead? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Like she rightly said, my name is um, Busola Olakade. So we are going to be having this training and um, on importance of soft skill. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Can I go ahead, please? Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I'm yet to see your screen though. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Please, do I have the attention of everybody so that we can go ahead quite fast? Okay, so we are going to be speaking on importance of soft skill, like you rightly said. Um, we have um, the content. We're going to be um, understanding the conceptual analysis for the term skills. What do we even mean by skills? What are the type of skills known to man? Or is it just random things that we refer to as skills? Of course, I will introduce um, what skills are, and then I want to explain how one can develop soft skills particularly. And um, we can also have how can soft skills prepare me for the job market and why it is even necessary then the essence of soft skill in a tech space. I understand that um, we're from a tech background. We know a lot about product design, graphic design, brand designing, data science, and all of that. But now this is, um, this is talking about your general skills, things that, abilities that you should possess, behavioral disposition that you should have, if you're going to be improving on your career going forward. Am I communicating? I need to know if everybody's hearing me and if I can go ahead. 
Yes, we can hear you loud oh, okay. and clear. All right, thank you. So I understand that we know a lot about calculations, computing, and all of that. But then, is that is it enough for us to improve in our career going forward? Is it enough? Can you can it take you to the next step? Can it help you improve? Can it even improve the process of an organization? Can it improve the culture? That is why we have soft skills, which can help us achieve these things. Already, we know um, we know um, all the skills necessary. That's the technical skills, the hard skills. You know, it could be Microsoft, it could be um, Google Suits or cloud computing and all of that. But then, that can help you, you know, complete your task. But then does it improve your person? Does it help you in your career growth? And those are the things that we'll be talking about this afternoon. So um, introducing, certain employability skills are required to exhibit the competencies that are attractive to employers of labor. However, transferable or not, the need for these skills tend to unfold in the development of your career journey and get improved on from the experience that strengthens and modifies them. So aside your technical skills, what this basically means is that there are some skills that it is not, it's just like we have certain things that um, at certain times you say, oh, some things are not, they are unwritten rules, so to speak. For instance, if you walk into an interview room and um, there may be a board of directors or as the case may be seated, there are certain things they are looking for, even when you speak or when they ask you a question, they want to, if you're listening, they want to know if you are able to take details of the question that you are being asked, or if you even comprehend certain questions that you are asked. So this will help you improve in your career journey. And then you can even improve these skills with certain experiences that you have going forward. So you can, it can help you strengthen such skill and then you can also modify the skills. So we have um, conceptual analysis of skill. What is a skill? What do I say? Because um, I've come by people that when I ask them about their skills, when I ask them about their skills, um, some will say, oh, I'm good in administration. Oh, I'm good in this. Oh, I'm good in that. They do not exactly know what a skill is. And that's nobody's fault. They do not know. They know that they, they can do certain things, but they do not even understand why these things are called skills. And that's why we have, um, this conceptual analysis here. Skill is any developed character trait that aids the ability to successfully carry out a task efficiently. That's just what a skill is. So if you have certain abilities, even cooking, doing anything, you know, that can help you complete a task is a skill. If you know how to um, take initiatives to do certain things in an organization, it's a skill. So it's any character trait. It's not something that, it's not, it's not um, quantifiable like technical skills. It's not, um, for instance, I could say, if um, I'm a digital marketer, for instance, I can indicate that, oh, there are certain engagements on a post, maybe or something that I put online. I can read the engagement, you know, things that come with when I um, post an ad or do an ad or something. Those are quantifiable. It is a skill that my, the MD of the company can say, oh, she's good with this content. When she gives this content, certain engagement comes up. You know, there are a lot of engagements with whatever she posts and all of that. But in this case, it is unquantifiable. I cannot tell how much or how less, you understand? But there is always an improvement to show that, oh, you were better than this yesterday. And that improvement is only exhibited when you constantly practice these skills. So it's just any character traits that you have, you know, that aids the ability to successfully carry out the task. Most often than not, tasks require that they are completed within a defined time frame. So even if you possess these skills, you are expected to um, say, if you're going to be using these skills to complete the task, it still has a time frame. whether technical skills, hard skills, people skills, there is a required time frame if you'll be needing it to complete a task. That's what this simply says. Um, for an ability to develop into a skill, certain, ex certain external conditions intended to influence the level of ability displayed must occur. 
So what this means is that, yes, everybody can have an ability. A growing child knows how to speak English, knows how to maybe from what, um, from the experiences he or she had gained in the environment or from the things that have registered in his brain as a child, for instance. So, you know, growing up, a child can randomly speak English. He has that ability. He has that ability to speak whatever language that he was raised with. But then how does it become a skill? How does such ability become, how does such ability become a skill? How is it able to put it into proper use, you know, that can help him or her improve in the career process? That's what this is talking about. So we have um, common skills. Um, there are generic skills. Generic skill, you know, it applies across a variety of jobs. They are just normal skills that you should have. Certain times um, I come by CVs that says, oh, I'm proficient at Microsoft Word. I could do this with PowerPoint. That is very constant in CVs. You would see so many things, but it always have Microsoft PowerPoint and um, is it Microsoft Access and Excel, yes. Those three things are usually there. Do they now become generic skills for, for persons to possess before, you know, getting a role? Is that the case? Do I call these generic skills? No, I do not. They're supposed to be technical skills, but because of um, the place we live in now, where we find ourselves, people tend to think that um, such skills are generic, but they are not. We also have labor skills, you know, these are kind of skills that require physical labor. For instance, if you are in construction, there are certain labor skills that you should possess before you're considered for job positions. Then we understand hard skills, which are also technical skills. Then um, life skills. Life skills are derived from experiences and how you can handle them. I can have certain experiences with different persons and I can handle them differently. This is because I have perceived the experiences differently. Now, this is owing to the kind of um, personality of whatever experiences that I have from those persons, so to speak. It depends on how I've perceived the person's character. That will now determine, okay, how do I respond to this person? So those are life skills. Then talk about people skills. People skills is just, um, they are skills that you've acquired over time from constant interaction with people. Constant interaction with people will help you develop certain skills. Like I remember at one time, I think um, when I was still um, younger than I am now, when I was, you know, trying to build my career, I, I when I come by people and they say they certain things to me, especially words that I've not heard before, it now became a habit, it became a part of me to just Google it. And why was I doing that? Someone asked me, why, why did you used to do that? It's not because I just want to know if the person is saying something correctly, no. Because I want to know how I can use that word the next time I need to express something that was just expressed. Maybe um, I need to express certain things. It will now help me to determine, oh, okay. It has registered in my brain that such a word was used at one time like this. So I can, you know, reiterate such a word or such a phrase of course, as the case may be again. And then soft skills, of course, they are character dispositions and then social skills. Social skills simply explains verbal or non-verbal gestures of communicating. It could be listening, it could be sharing, as the case may be. It could be even um, knowing when to, when, to, when to give person a room to have their time, you know, it could be, Certain general things, okay, we have people that kept, um, that I have to admit some person. Okay, that's okay. So this is what um, skills means generally. They are just dispositions, characters. It is now a process for it to develop gradually before it can now help you improve your career. So you can have certain abilities that are not skills yet. You don't even know you have certain character dispositions that can develop into skills. You don't know that you possess them because you've not been able to properly learn them, you know, introspect and then practice over time. That is how it can develop into a skill. Um, so we're going to also consider how we can develop soft skills. Soft skills are also core skills, yes. And they are necessary, 
you know, it's necessarily developed ability or capacity required through deliberate and sustained efforts to smoothly and adaptively carry out complex activities or job functions involving ideas, things, or people. So generally, those are that's what soft skills are. It's just a developed ability. At one point, it's just an ordinary ability. Okay, yes, I can just make a boiling rice. I can just cook this, or I can just I can just cook that. But when I now um, constantly learn how to cook other forms of rice, or maybe to cook my rice in another way entirely. I'm now trying to develop that ability. And if I constantly do that, if I now constantly practice, it becomes a skill. It becomes something that can help me grow. I know now all over the social media, we have different people who, you know, who makes different meals and all of that. They have constantly practiced that ability and it has now become a skill. Just like you have in technical skills too. Certain people growing up, I know, I think I had a friend of, at one time, she had a phobia for just using computers. This is not about technical skills. This has nothing to do with computing or even using Excel and all of that. She just didn't want to touch the computer. I don't know why she just had a phobia for wanting to touch it. So she didn't have that kind of ability. So there is nowhere practice is coming from. She, can, she won't be able to practice what she doesn't even have the ability to do. So it can become a skill. How does such a person now begin to um, say, consider technical skills? It's going to take constant learning and practicing to develop such abilities. So in contrast, technical or hard skills are quantifiable abilities, like I said earlier, that are acquired to develop solutions to already existing problems. Technical skills, um, like you have in um, UI, UX designs and all of that. There's a problem. Your technical skills will help you to create solutions to these problems. In soft skills, if I'm communicating with you, I can communicate in such a diplomatic manner that you may not perceive that there is a problem. That is why um, they say that when you send a mail to someone, for instance, it's you, that mail will determine if, you know, you are projecting potential confusion or that conversation is going to be successful. There's going to be a difference. So for technical skills, there are existing problems that you are supposed to create solutions to. But for soft skills now, you cannot exactly tell when there's a problem or not because most often than not, it involves interaction. It involves human interactions. So in other words, these skills can be invested in to enhance opportunities for career growth. For instance, um, I can have you know, good um, professional skills, maybe in human resources, for instance. I can write my um, professional certification, or for instance, in UI UX, you can have different trainings that you pay for, that you've invested in, that helps you grow as a person, that improves your ability so to speak. So it can help you improve your career growth while you constantly practice. If you go for these trainings and you're not practicing, there is no knowledge, you've not learned. You, only, you were only able to sit at that training to hear, to listen to what the person has to say. But if you're not able to transfer the knowledge, then you're not, you not practicing and it has not helped you to go invariably. So the following soft skills may help you to improve your career growth. Like I said earlier, in your, your technical skills, as the case may be, it can help you grow. You can invest in it. You can have different trainings. You can have um, system automation trainings. You can, even in the um, energy sector, you can have solar PV trainings. You can have different kinds of trainings, as the case may be. But for soft skills now, we have commercial awareness and customer service skills. You can ask yourself, as a UI UX designer or um, a digital marketer, for instance, or someone who does um, programming, so to speak, why do I need commercial awareness? Why do I need commercial awareness? Why do I need to have customer service skills? What's the essence? I don't need to speak to customers. I can just be on my laptop, sit down and do whatever it is I want to do. Trust me, you, you do need customer service skills. You do need to have a commercial awareness. Why do I say so? The businesses that you're working for day in, day out, 
there is a target market for them before they started the business. They already know who their customers are. And those are the persons that um, their activities are projected towards. They already know um, who, who it is they are selling their services to, as the case may be, or their products. So in this case, if you are the person in charge, maybe you are the product manager or something, you may be required to speak with clients. You may be required to properly communicate the things that you have done. Or if you are a designer, for instance, and you cannot even communicate what it is you're showing on your dashboard, or as the case may be, how do I understand what you've done? Especially for persons who do not even understand the tech language, whatever technology language that is used. How do I understand it? How do you put it in terminologies that, you know, that will make me understand, oh, this is what you've done. So you need to be able to give certain illustration that will show that, oh, okay, it can help you now improve maybe the user experience and things like that. Um, communication skills now. Communication skills can really, really help you improve the process in an organization, regardless of the department you're working in or the tasks that are assigned to you. It's, it works with your team members, for instance, it works with the organization, it helps the culture. It also works with the client. Because like I said, in um, commercial awareness, you're supposed to be able to communicate your thoughts. There are persons that, um, I know we have audio learners, we have visual learners, as the case may be, but you should also be able to, when you have certain thoughts in your head, you should be able to communicate it to the next person knowledge transfer. You should be able to transfer that knowledge that you have. So if you have something in your mind, you have a mental picture of something you want to create in your mind, for instance, how do you make me understand that this is how you want to create it? How do you make me understand that, oh, this is what we should achieve from this thing that you want to create? I can tell you, for instance, that, oh, that thing you have said, whatever it is you want to create, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm allowed to say so because I'm not in your shoes. I'm not thinking like you. You have been able to wrap your head around it. You already have a foresight of how you should create it, but I'm not in that picture. So I'll be asking you a lot of questions back and forth. We're going to have a lot of back and forth. And that is because you have not communicated. You've spoken to me, yes. I have listened to you, yes. But you have not communicated what you want to do. So teamwork also comes in as um, a soft skill. Can you properly collaborate with people if you're working remotely as um, a tech expert, can you collaborate? Can you work with people day in, day out? Can you also negotiate and persuade people? I can come with you, come to you as a client, for instance, and tell you, oh, this is what I want. This is what I, for instance, maybe I have um, an e-commerce firm and I want you to create something really nice for my website and all of that. Can you properly persuade me that this is what is trending? You know, considering that you, you've made your, um, you've done your analysis, you, are, you understand the trends in the market and all of that. Can you properly persuade me? Can you also do that? So problem solving skills are also necessary. What do I mean by problem solving skills? Problem solving skills helps you to determine or identify certain problems and how you can create solutions to this problem. So there is like, um, there is like a cycle that you should follow when there are problems, or maybe there is an issue that has been communicated to you, maybe from the designs that you've made or from certain tasks that have been assigned to you. Do you just fidget or do you just move here and there? Or how do you manage these problems when they come your way? You're supposed to identify the problem, know what caused the problem, identify a solution. You can also implement the, the solution and evaluate even if that solution works, for instance. So if I come to you and I say, oh, this um, chat box on my website is not working. I don't know when clients send messages, we don't receive them, we don't know what's happening. So you create a solution as a tech expert that, oh, let's try this, this should work. How do you know if the solution that you have provided has worked? How do you know if it has worked? Because you have to implement it, you have to constantly evaluate it to know if you need a better solution or the one that you have provided 
works for whatever it is needed for. So you also need leadership skills to improve the culture of the organization. This will help you to understand what kind of leadership style that flows in an organization. Um, participative, for instance, not authoritative. So that also works. Then your time management skills will help you to properly prioritize your tasks. You should organize, you should plan your tasks and know what to do at the right time. Um, then your entrepreneurial skills as well. It puts you in the position of um, maybe the owner of the company or as a case, maybe you are able to do maybe business development activities, you know, help the business grow, so to speak. Um, so we're going to quickly move to why are soft skills even necessary? We can do a lot of things with technology, but why are soft skills even necessary? Why do we need them? Core skills may come off as invaluable to business success as opposed to technical or hard skills. They are, however, unagreeably important in the consistent running of the business organization. So yes, if you are tech experts and you're working in a FinTech organization, for instance, I understand that you're tech experts, but being a tech expert will help you to complete certain tasks. But will it help you to have a good work experience? Will it help you to build relationship um, with your team members? Will it help you to improve in your interpersonal skills? Will it do all of that for you? So aside being a tech expert, aside you know, knowing all the calculations, doing all the coding and the programming and all of that, how can you become relevant? How can you be more relevant in an organization other than you know, completing whatever tasks that was assigned to you that requires your technical skills? So certain achievable benefits come with being able to develop and exhibit required soft skills. It can improve your ability to work with and influence other people. Of course, this is from your interpersonal skills. If you are able to develop good people skills, you know when to give certain responses, you know when to listen, most importantly, you know when to listen as well. So this will help to influence um, people around you and it improves your ability to work. It can help your strong business relationship with clients and or vendors. So when you deal with clients, for instance, you now um, there are certain clients that when they walk into a store, for instance, they want to speak with a particular person. They want a particular person to attend to them. That's not because the person does a better job or speaks better, no. It is because the person has certain etiquettes. So certain et etiquettes are required for you to maintain business relationships with clients or vendors. How do you speak with them? How do you um, respond to the problems that they give to you? Do you even understand their concerns? Do you empathize? Do you put yourself in their shoes? So when you have these soft skills, it helps you to improve or build strong business relationship with your clients or your vendors as the case may be. It will also help you to improve your professional network which in turn accelerates your career projection. So there are um, professional communities that you may join that will help to improve your network because there are so many things that you can learn from there. It may not be that you keep learning um, your, anything that is professional communities, but then it will help you to share your thoughts. You may have certain issues that um, you need to provide solutions to, and you're not able to do it alone. They say a problem shared is half so. So if you belong to, or if you join this professional network or these professional communities, you can bring up certain concerns and you listen to diverse means of solving that problem, which you may not even have thought about. So that also helps you as a person. So it can help you create career durability. And that's what I mean by being a stellar employee. Technical skills, you are very good at what you do, but your character disposition in an organization, how do you relate with people? How do you communicate your thoughts? Are you authoritative? Do you understand? So this can also help you to build a proper career. Otherwise, you, you hear when, um, I think I even hear in churches now when they'll tell you, oh, your hard work 
can take you places, but then your relationship with people also matters. How you live with people, how you communicate with people day in day out can also add, add to your career growth, can also add or influence your career durability. So that also comes to play. Being a good communicator can give you a better awareness of your audience and the approach to communicating with them. So I'm, not, I'm going to use um, a very relatable experience, for instance. Please, am I communicating? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use um, a relatable experience. If you walk into a luxury store, for instance, if you walk into a luxury store, for instance, and then, um, or if I walk into a luxury, luxury store, permit me, and um, I'm angry, I'm upset. I got something from the store and I don't like it. And I've come to complain in person. And then I, I got a customer service person that keeps telling me at every, at every point that I make a complaint, all she has to say is, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't like this fabric that you gave me. This is not what I ordered, I'm sorry. You also said you were going to deliver at 2 p.m. but you're delivering at 5 p.m., I'm sorry. No, that's not what I'm telling you. You're supposed to bring the chocolate or whatever, you're supposed to bring it to my destination. You're supposed to do this. I told you when I sent you a mail or thereabouts, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it doesn't work in this context. It's not about being sorry. It's not about you responding to what I have to say at the moment. That's not it. You're not communicating because you're not listening to my concerns. So it's going to come up to me as if you're just telling me to shut up. That's how I'll perceive it. And then at some point I'll have to yell at you and say, oh, please let me talk. Oh, please let me speak. Can I just, can I talk? I, you know, we will get to that point because you're not allowing me to communicate my concerns. And by extension, you will not have thoughtful solutions to give me. Now, you see, in this case, your technical abilities do not come to play. Your technical skills do not come to play. So even if you're in um, a tier one organization, for instance, and you lack this skill, you're going to constantly have back and forth with your clients, with um, your colleagues, as the case may be, because you're not communicating appropriately. You don't, you, you don't have good listening ability. You're not able to listen and understand the kind of audience that you have, one or two persons as the case may be. So you don't know the approach to use to communicate with them. So as much as the importance of these soft skills is underemphasized, perceived as undervalued and has less training provided for it, yes. Organizations unarguably expect that candidates or employees possess and exude such abilities, which by extension improve capacity. So if you're coming to my organization, for instance, or if, I'm, if you are a new hire in an organization, there are certain questions I won't be asking you. I won't tell you, Oh, how much can you communicate? Maybe you're seated at an interview. I won't be asking you how much you can communicate. I won't be has asking you how much you can manage your time. I know, of course, I might have seen it in your CV that, oh, you have good time management skills and all of that. But I won't be asking you if they are true or false. It is when, um, as, as it evolves, as so many tasks, things unfold in the environment, so many events will unfold, it will help me to realize if you actually communicate properly the way you should communicate, or as the case may be, or maybe when yeah. tasks are assigned to you and you do not deliver before deadline or maybe even on the supposed date and you do not deliver. By extension, I'm going to decipher that, oh, this person do not even actually have good time management skills. So these questions will not be asked employees expect that you have these skills because there are abilities that you ought to have learned and practiced over time so that you can, um, it now becomes a skill alongside your technical skill that you can now work with, you know, to improve your career as a person. How can soft skills prepare me for the job market? Wow, how can soft skills even prepare me for the job market? Okay, so I may be um, I may be a job applicant, for instance, and I'm wondering, 
oh, I should know how to communicate. I should know how to manage my time. How do I manage my time when I don't even have a job yet? I don't even know the things that I should be doing yet. There's, I don't have a colleague to communicate with. So why do I need to you know, learn how to properly communicate? So the impression perceived by a potential employer remains a factor of your ability to communicate and convince him of the additional quality that you come with. I'm going to perceive whatever impression it is you pass to me when I speak with you, maybe during interview or during negotiation, for instance. And this will now help you to differentiate yourself from other candidates. Every candidate should have an additional quality. If you have the same tech skills that I have, say for instance, I'm, I'm asking um, if you have certain core skills in UI, UX, for instance, are you able to do this? Are you able to do that? You tell me yes. The next candidate comes in, are you able to do this? Are you able to do that? He also tells me yes. Same with the third candidate, same with the fourth, same with the fifth. So, Everybody is able to do it. And then uh, maybe I give you a task during the interview and everybody scores a six. So what then gives you, what, what then makes you qualified for the job role? What is the additional quality that you come with that makes, that will make me want to differentiate you from other candidates? So such additional qualities, especially those which resulted in certain achievements stand as a stronghold of your application. So for instance, if you communicate really well, if you've learned and practiced it, practiced it over time, you may have um, maybe had um, a speaking engagement at one point that may be on your CV. It may strike a chord in the employee for instance, or in the employer rather. It may strike a chord say, oh, you've engaged in different speaking engagements. Or it probably means you communicate really well. So all of you will be less left is for you to convince me that, oh yes, you, you communicate really good. And how can this be done? Doing the interaction with the employer. When I speak with you, I can perceive how much of a communicator you are. Aside that you are required, aside that you're required to update your CV, write a cover letter or create a portfolio, you may consider being flexible and resilient. You know, yes, I understand that, um, Maybe um, in the mathematical world, there are certain, certain ways that things should be done. Or should I say, um, maybe in chemistry or in further maths or maths, there are certain additions that should add up to a certain figure. Do you understand? But this kind of skills, these soft skills requires flexibility. You have to know when to um, you know, change position. Not that you're um, going to entirely change the process, you know, but just make some adjustments to still arrive at the same conclusion that you had envisaged. So you have to learn to be flexible. Nothing is cast in stone. For a good communicator, nothing is cast in stone. I can rephrase the statement as many times as I like. It could be for different purposes. I'm saying the same thing, but I'm just rephrasing and rephrasing. That's just what it means. So you should also develop an agile mentality to provide solution. What do I mean by an agile mentality? When you're in an organization, there are certain tasks, um, tasks that will come up that will require that persons take up those rules. It is not exactly assigned to anybody. It is not exactly assigned to anybody that, oh, Mr. Ojo should take up this task or Mrs. Bolu should take up this task. No. So it now takes your ability to be able to provide solutions to problems. Do you have a problem solving ability? Do you have a problem solving skill? That is where your agile mentality comes in because you're having so many thoughts in your head. You are able to listen and understand whatever concern or task that is on ground at the moment. And then you can provide thoughtful solutions to it at once. So that keeps, that makes you an agile staff. There are staffs in an organization. I think um, I've had an experience where um, it's, it's an e-commerce for instance. And then when, when other employees come in, people wonder, why is everybody saying this one? Why is everybody saying this person? Why is everybody saying to me? Can't it be other persons? Yes, it can be other persons. But the other persons don't take up this task. 
And these tasks, they add to your achievements as you grow. You're not agile. You only want to be, um, you only want to take on the task. Oh, this is what they said is my own. Oh, this is my JD. So these are the things that I will be doing day in, day out. Okay, good one. Does that mean that you can't take on tasks? You've forgotten that these tasks can also help you improve. It can help you improve yourself, maybe your speaking abilities or as the case may be. So you should also develop the talking habits to improve professional competencies. Like I said about the professional communities, it will help you to improve your competencies, especially when we have um, new employment laws, for instance, in human resources and all of that. There are certain things that the event has not, you don't have such thing happening in your own organization yet. So you may not know how you will even respond to it or handle it. So in this case, when you have joined communities as a tech expert, there are certain things that, you come, that will come your way or that you listen to other people say, that you know, oh, so this is a solution to this kind of problem. It means that by implication, when certain events unfold in your own organization too, you will have likely solutions to that problem already. You already have, you know, say 65% answers to whatever questions that are asked because you've engaged in these professional communities. You've engaged in them. You've read um, maybe articles that have been posted. You've seen different situations that have been attended to and all of that. So some, it helps you to a certain extent to, um, to provide solutions to certain problems that um, may come your way. You should assess key business or market trends. I think I talked about market trends earlier. You should be able to um, understand trends in the market so that you know what to sell to your potential clients. Seek career expertise across sectors and connect with a variety of skill requirements. At certain times, like I said, for tech skills, it is quantifiable and it can be invested on. So from time to time, you're supposed to improve on this skill set. You're supposed to improve on the skill set. So just like um, in certain fields, we may have stage one, stage two, stage three, maybe the HIC, for instance, you know, you should improve on these skills. Um, specifically, constantly practice soft skills, differentiate a high value candidate from a qualified candidate. Let me take this line again. Constantly practice soft skills, differentiate a high value candidate from a qualified candidate. Yes, so I can have um, different um, tech experts work into an organization, for instance, perhaps I'm having an interview session with them and they walk in. And like I said earlier, they, they have you know, a certain level of experience. They're all qualified. They're qualified for the job role and probably that's why I've shortlisted them for the role. But how do I differentiate which is the high value candidate? Which is my stellar candidate amongst them? Who is the star candidate? How do I differentiate them? Now that is where these soft skills come in. Are they able to, the things they are able to do, maybe they are technical skills, whatever it is they're able to do, if they're able to um, uh, do their digital marketing abilities very well, or their graphics design, they're good with Photoshop, Canva, and all of that. How do they communicate their abilities to me? How do they let me know that, oh, I know how to do these things? There are some persons that they know what to do, but they don't know how to do it and then expressing it becomes a problem. So if you know how to cook, you can learn it on Google. You can learn, oh, seven ways to make a father sauce, seven ways to make the jollof rice. But then how do I now make it when the chips are down? What is the recipe like? They can write it all over the page, but in the process, are you able to do it? So that is what differentiates you. Your soft skills, you know, having acquired your technical skills now, your soft skill is what differentiates you from other qualified candidates. So um, this is supposed to be your additional quality. Your soft skill is supposed to be your additional quality. Considerable inherent behaviors that can set a tech expert apart are further explained below. Your ability to efficiently collaborate with fellow tech experts requires 
that you communicate effectively via various channels as necessary to boost creativity. So um, if you have a team of tech experts in your organization, for instance, how do you communicate on, let's say you're working remotely, how do you collaborate? How do you work together? How do you- It has something to do with the So maybe it's there. How do you manage um, efficiency? Please, can we have everyone mute their minds? Thank you very much. How do you collaborate with your team? We're all working. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So how do you communicate with your team despite that you're working remotely? How do you help your team to boost creativity despite that you're working, working remotely? So this efficient, efficiency really matters a lot, especially when you're working remotely as a tech expert. In any case, your audience determines to a large extent your communication style. So whatever audience it is that you have, are you communicating with a client? Maybe the client only has um, an online restaurant. The person doesn't know anything about the UI UX, doesn't just want a page, an Instagram page running, everything running. The person has no idea what you're talking about. So when you are coming to tell me the Java this, the Java that, I'm wondering what are you even talking about? I'm lost. I don't even, I don't even get it. I don't know what you're talking about. So there's a problem. So the kind of audience that you have, it determines how you should communicate. Are you going to be um, giving illustrations now? Now that you know that, oh, you should be giving me maybe the layman kind of explanation, not technical explanations like you would with your colleagues or fellow tech experts in this case. So how you communicate with me really matters and that can help us to you know, improve efficiency in collaborating. A team of tech experts may suffer a ripple effect of inefficient time management. So this also comes to play. Like I said earlier, your time management skills. Are you able to, are you organized? Are you able to properly prioritize your task? Do you know what is urgent and important or not urgent but important or even not important or not even urgent? Do you know how to prioritize these tasks? Do you know what should come first? The tech team is like a component part of a machine. A breakdown in any of these parts affects the outputs and the turnaround time it was scheduled to have worked. So if I have um, a generator, for instance, for me to, and then um, I hear them say, is it, um, maybe I have a 20 kV generator and then Maybe one day I get back from work, I start the generator and it's not coming on. I call somebody to come fix it. And the person is talking about block engine. Person is talking about the, um, what's it called? Is it the AVR or something? It's talking about the one engine or the other. It's talking about a belt. Just a belt stop working. And the whole part is not functioning. So that's why I likened this to um, the component part of a machine. Just the belt is, or even a car, for instance. Maybe when um, a boat is losing, something is happening, or maybe it's just in the tire. Just a boat is losing by the tire. The car won't, will not be moving. You have to tighten the boat, or maybe when you have to change your tire, it affects the whole system. So when you do not properly manage your time, when you're not organized, or you do not give feedback on how you are managing your time, or which tasks you are picking first, it affects the entire team. And then it affects the output and the turnaround time that was scheduled for that task to have um, been completed. So it automatically means that you dropped your end of the ball. That's what it means. So a robust professional network is a crucial resource that helps to overcome challenges and solve problems. So I keep speaking about your networking. It's also a skill. You should learn how to network. You can constantly learn and practice and also introspect how this can help you grow to allow for insights and solutions, which by extension will improve resourcefulness. 
So if you have a professional network, you can, you know, you can discuss with a team of professionals. It will reduce the orders of a free flowing conversation. So if I've had an experience talked about in a professional community, for instance, or between my colleagues, the next time I'm having maybe something like that kind of conversation with a client or another colleague, it reduces the problem of communicating the solution to that person. Because I've had this kind of experience, I've heard it being talked about by other persons, I've heard the solutions they offered, I've heard how they, or I've listened to how they evaluated such solutions or the implementation of such solutions. I've listened to them. I know how it works for them. So in this case that this client is bringing this same problem to me, I know how to you know, present the solution to that client. I know how to implement the solution and I know how to evaluate the solution. So it's just going to appear like the client that, oh, wow, Mr. Ojo, he was like, he, knows, he knew what the problem was and it was just as if he took out the problem. So I'm going to come off as a resourceful person to the client or to um, the MD of the company or my line manager, as the case may be. It's going to make me appear as a resourceful person because um, I have a large network of persons. I listen, I read articles day in, day out. I see people, I read people's experiences and how they prefer solutions to this, um, whatever problem it is they have. So when I come by these kind of problems, I know how to respond to such problems. So that's what um, helps you with. Um, how do you solve a problem that you know nothing about? The ability to empathize, sorry, this is empathize, the ability to empathize with an application user and understand their problem is essential to getting the latter solved. That's the problem. So how do you solve a problem that you know nothing about? So if I come to you and I'm telling you, oh, this website that you created for me, I don't know what's wrong with the chat box. It's just doing somehow. When somebody even sent me, send, sends us a message online to complain, it will just be showing one X, 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 or it will just be showing one. I don't even know. There was one time I logged in and it's showing an um, evaluation error. What is evaluation error? I'm the client now. So I'm giving you this complaint. I don't need you to roll your eyes. I don't need you to say, who oh, was this person talking about? I need you to put yourself in my shoes. I'm just a frustrated application user. Or if I'm using an application and I'm calling maybe um, GC Bank or Access or whatever bank it is, and I'm calling the bank, oh, your application, I'm trying to log into my mobile app and it's telling me something, something error, evaluation error, or that error, for instance. The person has to be in my shoes. The customer service representative has to sit, be on my seat, understand um, my perception of the problem I'm going through at the moment or whatever concerns I'm having at the moment. So you have to know how to empathize with um, your clients or your colleagues as the case may be so that you can understand their problem and prefer thoughtful solutions. This can help you constantly get you know, problems solved from time to time. Employers are attracted to persons who can impressively display the ability to think on their feet. This requires active listening skills to details in order to offer thoughtful solutions, yes. So sometimes um, you can be in a meeting, for instance, and certain questions are asked or certain problems are thrown um, to person, the people sitting in the boardroom or something, or it's put on the table, for instance, it does not necessarily mean that the solution has to be provided on the spot. But your ability to think of how to, first of all, dissect that problem or what may have caused that problem, you're already inches away from um, creating the solution of preferring solution. So when the problem comes, it doesn't mean that you have to give the solution right there on the spot, but your ability to think it through that, what would have caused this problem? Is it because of this? Oh, these are the things, these are the lined up things that could cause you to be getting this error message, or these are the um, lined up you know, possibilities for you to be getting this error message. You have it, your thinking cap on all the time. That is you being proactive now. 
So we have proactivity here as well. Keeping up with tech trends and best practices is a function of being proactive, being a proactive, critical thinker. So when you can think on the spot, when you are a critical thinker, you can assess situations very quickly. It makes you proactive because when you think about these things, um, unconsciously you swing into action. So that also makes you proactive, thereby improving your professional skills. So to wrap it up, we have um, this here, to develop these abilities, that is soft skills now, to develop your ability to properly communicate, to show empathy, to be proactive, to properly listen, listen to details, be very attentive. It is important that you learn, you introspect, and you fine tune a constructive style of practice. Now, practicing is not, for instance, if you're um, in the process of learning to be a good communicator, and then you, you want to practice. You know, saying, oh, Linda, maybe one of your colleagues, for instance, Lin Linda, I want to practice how to be communicating properly. Okay, you're not saying, I am a girl. You're not practicing. There's no approach. It's not const constructive. There's no approach to your practice. So you have to devise means, you know, that can help you introspect and practice what you've learned. So that um, as time goes by, when events unfold, even unconsciously, you practice the things that you have learned and it's a smooth sail. Um, so um, we have come to the end of my slides. And I hope that we've been able to learn a few things on how we can improve our soft skills and the necessary soft skills that can help us to um, improve our career growth despite that we are tech experts. Thank you very much. I hope you were able to get a thing or two. Thank you so much, Ms. Tola. This session was actually very awesome and amazing. Like the masterclass itself. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now we're giving room for questions. If you have any questions, can you um, signify and unmute yourself and ask? Anybody? The concept of soft skills actually, I feel it needs you need a lot of dedication as as much dedication as you give your technical skills you should give it you should give your soft skills that much dedication as well you know you may, you cited an example where you spoke about um you know when you miss out on deadlines consistently you might not actually tell your maybe manager or supervisor that you lack um time management skills but your action at shows that you actually lack time management skills yeah. or when you yes. don't know how to ask yeah. for help and you just keep making some mistakes that could that should have been avoided if you had asked for help. You know, like it shows that you lack communication skills, and those things are not things that you might actually see. In fact, I, I actually learned a lot of things from your session. So it was very, very, very amazing. Does anyone have um question? All right, thank you, Belako. Yes. Yeah, so someone said um networking as a soft skill. How do I go about this? This requires that you join um, professional communities and engage in those communities. So whatever career path that you've chosen, because this will also help you not to play too in your career path. You understand? Because at some point, every career path can play to you. Depends on how you have approached your career or the, the progression better still. Depends on how you've approached it. So you're supposed to join communities and engage in these communities. That is when you can read up the, ex the experiences that um, comes through. So that's simply what it is. That's what networking can, especially with persons who have technical skills. There's a lot of things, there are a lot of things that you will learn in, in these communities that you may not even realize that you needed to know. So it's simply joining these communities. You can search for tech communities online. There are a lot of them you can join and then constantly engage in these communities. Thank you so much, Priscilla, for that. Yes, um, for engaging in communities. Our alumni group, for instance, now, you, you can bring up topics, talk about your achievements, what you are currently up to, ask questions, ask people 
engage with them, know what's up with other people. You know, as you share what's up with you, you know what's up with other people and see if they're a good fit for probably what you intend to do. Maybe you want to start a project, you want to start something, you want to um, get access to a particular place. You don't know anything can come off from engaging. So thank you. Exactly. You can have people share their knowledge with you. You can you can even pick some person's brain to help you improve your, yourself as well. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Any other questions, please? We are wrapping up already. All right. Someone say someone said that I distract myself and end up in procrastination. When I come back okay. from work, I don't want to do anything, even though I have things to do. Things to do. Okay, in this case, you have not prioritized um, your tasks. You've not created priority for these tasks. You are not, um, you need more of organization. Those things that you want to do when you get home, you know that you have to do them, but you just don't want to do anything is because you have not created them in a form where you want to do, you've probably done all the, what do I call them now? The tough tasks, like you think, you've completed all your tough tasks and you think, oh, these other ones are just mild skills. Oh, they can pass. I don't need to do them now. It doesn't come to play like that. So in this case, we call um, this kind of people, we call them the fraud eaters, for instance, because having to prioritize your task also has to do with your personalities. So we call them the frog eaters. These frog eaters, forgive me, we call them, it's just, it's just the name that we give to them. So these frog eaters, for them, it comes off as, oh, I've completed the big tasks for the day. Whatever it is, any other thing that can come my way, it's child's play. It won't help you. So you need to create um, like a quadrant now. That quadrant will help you to explain for the day. It is like creating a to-do list. It will help you create a to-do list to say, oh, this is not urgent. Now, those are the tasks that you're supposed to do when you get home or maybe when you get back from work. It will help you create like a to-do list. Yes, it is not urgent, but it is important for today. Yes, this other task is, is not urgent and is not important for today. It means I can do it tomorrow, so that's fine. You can set that aside. Okay, there are other tasks that they are not urgent, but they are important. Hmm. Okay, you want to do them in this time or at that time. It is going to be on your to-do list for that day. So you're supposed to create a plan. Plan how you want your day to go, the things that you want to complete for that day. Even if you do not complete 100% of these tasks, you would be able to complete at least 95% of them because there is an order of which you have created this task. You know what is urgent, you know what is important, you know what is not urgent or not important. So you can even do that the next day. So this comes, it has to do with prioritizing your task. And if you now comes, um, if we liken it to what happens in organizations, for instance, you can help yourself um, create a to-do list and then constantly give yourself feedback. That is what I meant by introspection. You can, you can even tell a colleague to be like um, somebody that can help you keep up with your time management abilities. You understand? So you, the colleague can ask you, oh, you said you were going to do this at this so time. Have you started? Have you started doing it? Oh, you said you would have completed this payroll schedule. Have you completed it? So it's like um, a watchdog for you already. So you can also do that for yourself. You can be your own watchdog by introspecting. So if you're constantly practicing something, you can stop to check, oh, have I done this? You created a schedule or you created a to-do list for yourself. You stop and introspect, oh, this is my to-do list. Where, where am I now? Am I on number three? Am I on number four? So when I get home, for instance, instead of saying I don't want to do anything at all, it means what I have left to do is things that are not urgent, but maybe important. So prioritizing your task, knowing will help you know how to properly manage your time. And then feedback will also work for you. Feedback will work for you to a very, very large extent. Um, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, I think it should. Does actually say thank you, Ma. 
someone said um thank you so much for this session please can you this session <laughs> maybe that'll be next time probably actually her um co-founder held a session on twitter twitter spaces on imposter on imposter syndrome so i'm going to share the link to our um telegram channel later today thank you so much Busola. do you does anyone have any other questions Okay, um, thank you so much. So I would like you to actually share the link to share the slide with um, or so that we can post on our alumni group. And um, in case there is there is anyone who missed the session, I would like to you know go back to the slides. Slides contain very interesting information, very awesome information. I don't know if you're able to do that. Yep. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Do you need me to share it with you via email? Yes, yes, please. Yes, thank you so okay. much. So the, so uh, the recording you're welcome. Of, this, yes, of this session would be um, uploaded on our YouTube channel and um, shared with our, we shared with you as well. Thank you all for coming and thank you for joining the call. Thank you for joining this. All right. So, thank um, you so much, Bellaco. Do have a wonderful evening. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for um staying to this time. We have amazing um events coming up on our alumni group, actually. So um, if not, if you've not been engaging the group, please engage. We share job opportunities. Let me know if you have applied. To any of them and if you are accepted if you are on the if you are in the interview stage of the um you know job opportunities that i've been posting please let me know so that we can you know help you you can track progress and we can help you know we can know how we can help rather sorry about that know how we can help you thank you so much see you next time bye bye everyone